I want to play something for you at the piano here. It's just a, a little piece of music that I made up. Actually, I was pulling your leg. What you're listening to is not music made by me, but it's made by a machine learning algorithm. And let's listen to it again. So the second time, did it sound any different? Is it any different? People often ask, can computers be creative? I'm not sure the question even makes good sense because I think creativity is embedded in our culture. It's about people communicating with each other. I think there is an important cycle where technology helps drive new media. I mean, just consider the film camera. But it wasn't the technology itself that drove photography as an artistic medium. And in fact, when the camera was invented, it wasn't even considered artistic. No, it was innovative people who transformed that technology into art by trying new things. And this not only gave birth to a new kind of artist called the photographer, it also freed painting to go towards abstract expressionism. So I don't personally think computers or any other machines are creative in a meaningful way, but I do think that technological innovation is a crucial, crucial part of artistic creation. I'm Douglas Eck, and I'm a research scientist at Google, working on the Google Brain team. I oversee a project called Magenta. It's our effort to generate music, video, images, and text using neural networks and other sorts of machine learning. Neural networks are loosely modeled after the human brain in that they consist of thousands or even millions of individual units called neurons, just like in the brain, connected to each other. Each neuron is pretty limited in what it can do. The power of the neural network comes when it contains many, many neurons and when it's able to learn from millions or even billions of examples from the real world. With the right data, these networks might be able to hold on to something really artistic and really human. They might even be able to pick up on something having to do with creative intent. Technology has always been a part of the creative process, I mean, it's a necessary ingredient in art. To have cave paintings, someone had to come up with the idea that you should mix dirt or charcoal with spit or animal fat. I mean, even writing also relies on technology, like papyrus and ink. If we work together with artists and musicians, we can form new sets of tools and new frameworks for trying out completely different ways of expression. The electric guitar was invented by Rickenbacker and Les Paul, and their job basically was to try to create a loud acoustic guitar. They weren't thinking of distortions or any of the crazy things that were done with the electric guitar. When I think of Magenta, I think of us as being more like Rickenbacker or like Les Paul than like Jimi Hendrix. You know, our job is to create technology and to better understand how that technology can fit into artists' lives. But we have to be very, very open and aware of the fact that it's likely going to be a next generation of artists who themselves come along and make that technology transformative. Artists just seem to like to break things. If you're given a camera, you overexpose the film. If you're given a guitar amp, you make the guitar amp distort. Brian Eno, a great, great musician, discussed this himself. Here's what Brian said. Whatever you now find weird, ugly, uncomfortable, and nasty about a new medium will surely become its signature. CD distortion, the jitteriness of digital video, the crap sound of 8-bit, all of these will be cherished and emulated as soon as they can be avoided. It's the sound of failure. So much modern art is the sound of things going out of control, of a medium pushed to its limits and breaking apart. My goal with Magenta is to see someone create a completely new kind of music, or a completely new kind of art, and that the Magenta work that we're doing is part of that. <laughs>